<laughs> and the super sense is, is our normal senses taking in vast amounts and letting us know. Maybe it's as simple as, you know, someone's calling us up to see if we'll volunteer for a bake sale or something like that, and we really can't take on any more. And and so and down inside, you know the answer to that is I don't want to do that. Yeah. And and it, whether you choose to or not, at least it's important to know your body doesn't think it's a good idea. Right. And you said it's visceral, not verbal. And and yes. tuning in, and that's what this whole beginning part of the book is, is tuning into, into your body and beginning to listen. And I think you're right. We've heard a lot about the mind-body connection and the, the gut and the wisdom of the gut. And yet it's like we hear it out there, but how do we bring it into our daily lives as busy parents, as busy human beings, and have it serve us, have it work? so that we're working together all four floors are alive yes it's an incredible resource and because your listeners are are parents um mostly janet i'll I'll, let let me give give another example that in how you can use this would you like to hear an example of how to use it in your parenting absolutely there's a story that that i I tell in my in my book about girls and raising daughters, which is of a of a girl who's um, sixteen year old girl who's got a, a very sweet boyfriend and they've been going out for for months and months and holding hands and going for long walks on Sundays and and it's a really you know, nice relationship that we'd all want our kids to have in, in, in being young and in love but but he's he's a boy and he's a twenty first century boy and so just lately he's been getting a little bit grabby when they're sitting in a bus stop somewhere or by themselves in a park. And when her mum asks this girl, you know, how's it going with your boyfriend? And she's, oh, mum, there's a bit of sexual pressure coming on. You know, I can feel that he's starting to, mm-hmm. I think he wants to, to have sex. And, and, and mum, I don't know what to do. And the mum, she's a, she's a wise mum. And she, and she's, so she, parents listening, no, you never, you never answer that question. You never tell a teenager, here's what you should do. Right. <laughs> because they, because they, what they really want is just to talk it over. And, and so her mum says, well, how do you feel about it? And, and the girl says, I don't know how I feel. You know, he's lovely. I adore him. He's the best boy in the world. I don't know. She says, and then her mum says something, which is really the, the Pulitzer Prize of parenting answers. And, and if you're listening, you've, you've got this now. You can have this and you, you write it on your sleeve. You know? Right, jot um, this down. <laughs> the mum says, she says, honey, sometimes our body sends us messages. When our brain and our heart are in a complete spin, Sometimes our body talks to us and our body knows what is right or wrong for us. Mm-hmm. And her daughter, her daughter's name is Genevieve, and, and Genevieve says straight away, like, oh, mum, you, you're right, she says. You know, one minute we're kissing and cuddling and it's really great. I'm just in heaven, you know. And But when he gets a bit too grabby, I, I just sort of squirm, you know, mm-hmm. and then I don't want to have sex with him yet. It, she just, it just bursts out of her bang, you know, there it is. And so parents of sons who are listening equally could be the boy making this call. And But the thing is that the mum has helped the girl to, to listen to her own insides. Girls are especially conditioned not to do that. There's a long centuries tradition of thinking of other people first and how do I please them and how do I please him. And so it's as simple as that. It's when you don't know what to do, which for me is like almost half the time, go down inside yourself and there'll be a sense of, does this feel right or doesn't it? And often it might be a matter of saying, look, I don't know yet. Let, let me have a think of, let me sit with that. Part of the fully human book is is this sort of thing that we're not designed for the lives we live now. And it, to be fully human, you have to really, really slow down to let your all the parts of you find themselves again and, and begin to to get in line. So this super sense is a thing, as I said, you can you can talk to a little. In fact, most people do know to talk to their kids. Say about with uh, preventing child abuse, for example. You know, mm-hmm. if your body feels squirmy and strange. Um, and and I, I had a friend I was talking to over the weekend. A man in his early fifties, terrific dad and we were talking about these ideas and he said i remember being in high school a priest in that it was a catholic 
school, a priest told me off and said, come to the presbytery after school. You've got some punishment coming your way because mm-hmm. you've been very bad. And he felt really physically uncomfortable. It wasn't just the punishment. It was, there was something weird about that man. Mm-hmm. And he refused to go. And there was a big fuss. Of course, it later came out that man had been abusing many children mm-hmm. and wow. he narrowly wow. escaped that. Wow. And he did it because he listened to yeah. something down here. That's that creepy, spidey sense that we get when yes. something just doesn't sit right. And